in the last half hour, Carver County attorney announced no criminal charges will be filed following the death of Prince nearly two years ago. We've also learned a Minnesota doctor accused of illegally prescribing an opioid painkiller for Prince has agreed to a settlement. Dr. Michael Schulenberg will pay $30,000 to settle a federal civil violation. Court documents say he put Prince on the opioid ox, ox, oxycodone and a week before his death, oxycodone, excuse me, the, to protect the singer's privacy, the prescription was written for Kirk Johnson, the singer's confidant and bodyguard. Schulenberg denies that. Schulenberg's lawyer notes the agreement is neither in admission of facts nor liability, and he's not currently the target of any criminal investigation. Lots of discussion of the doctor during the news conference. Team coverage happening this afternoon. Mary McGuire at Paisley Park with reaction from fans. But let's get started with Esme Murphy, who was at the Carver County Justice Center where that news conference just wrapped up. Esme? Well, Jason, a very somber news conference here as Mark Metz, the county attorney, said they simply, after an exhaustive investigation, cannot determine who supplied Prince with the fentanyl that killed him. Now, that fentanyl was actually in pills, according to the news conference, that were synthetic or, uh, or counterfeit Vicodin that had fentanyl in it. And the county attorney said quite clearly he is convinced that Prince, Prince did not know when he took that Vicodin that he was taking a pill that could kill him. Despite their extensive efforts, law enforcement was unable to determine the source of the counterfeit Vicodin laced with fentanyl. Therefore, without probable cause and no identified suspect, the Carver County Attorney's Office cannot file any criminal charges involving the death of Prince. Prince's death is a tragic example that opioid addiction and overdose deaths do not discriminate, no matter the demographic. Now, one of the things that we did hear that was new here that I had not heard before is that the day before Prince died, he was prescribed by Dr. Schulenberg clonidine, which is actually a drug that is used for opiate withdrawal, suggesting that Prince was trying to get off of these medications that he had become addicted to. A poignant note there. But again, the prosecutor here really stressing that after an exhaustive investigation, and he thanked his investigators, that they simply, in the, at the end of the day, could not determine determine who would supply that synthetic fentanyl that killed Prince in the end. Uh, so a sad day, the conclusion here of an exhaustive investigation, but again, no criminal charges will be filed in the death of Prince. Really, really tragic, as may because we learned that Prince certainly knew that he was in the throes of addiction. He was trying to get help. Uh, hard to know if he would have known, you know, if he knew he was taking fentanyl, if that would have made a difference or not, but uh, uh, just tragic all the way around. Absolutely, Jason. And I think what we heard here were some additional details about those final days, uh, that week before he died, that plane trip from the Atlanta concert where they had to land in Moline, where he nearly died. They had to be administered two doses of Narcan. We heard also more details about the final days. And again, uh, that prescription for clonidine, which is a withdrawal drug, suggesting that Prince was on board, perhaps, with trying to get off of these horrible drugs that he had become addicted to. Uh, and that is something that uh, people people here, uh, and certainly there were some fans here, say adds to the sadness of his untimely passing at the age of just 57. Like so many other Americans and Minnesotans, uh, the same fate could be felt Prince. Esme, thank you.